designed to be a series of opportunities to point to God's glory. Mm -hmm. The next danger in our churches is selective application, only applying those parts of scripture which speak to their own benefit or make them feel good. Remember, they have a feel-good neology, and that's what they're looking for. Um, question. Did God have a plan for Abraham's life? Yes. <laughs> Did God have a plan for David's life? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Did God have a plan for Moses' life? Yes. Yeah. Do you think that God has a plan for your life? Amen. Yes. But wait a second. Am I up there with, with famous people? Um, is that a little arrogant of me to think that I'm on the le level of Abraham and David and Moses? Um, they were great leaders of great nations. But this is a problem. We select who we want to be like, and so we select those great leaders as we're reading through the Bible. But how do I know that I was not meant to be one of the masses living under Egyptian slavery? Okay? My entire mm -hmm. life so that God could show future generations to be kind to the internationals living among them, like international students. Mm -hmm. That's what that says. Remember that you were a slave. You were in a foreign land. Be kind to those around you. Mm -hmm. um, only one, like there are 10 generations of slaves in Egypt, okay? Only one of them gets freedom, the last one. And who do we tell all the stories about? The last one, because we want to be winners. We want to be the main character. We wanted the things that make yeah. us feel good. They got out. They got out. Yeah. But you know what? Many of them were born a slave, lived a slave, and yeah. died a slave. And that was God's will for them. That was his plan for them. Where you are right now, you may not like it, but as long as there's not direct sin in your life, this is where God wants you right now. Now, you may think you need to be over here, and I te teach time management, um, manage, co not courses, but workshops, and if you want to be over here, what are you doing to get over here? Some of us are just wallowing here, because we're not over there, and we're not making the steps to get us over there. Maybe some of you will have to go back to school. Maybe some of you will have to learn another language. Maybe some of you will have to do this. And as you lead this class, you need to make goals. If God is calling me, and as I was sharing with somebody during the break, some of us say, I don't know God's will for my life. It's so hard to know God's will for my life. It is not. And I don't know why it's never been hard for me. I don't know why it just has never been hard. And I read somewhere once, God will not show you his will as you take this class and you want to know what God wants, he will not show you his will if all you want to do is vote on it. And many of us, we just want to know so we can decide if we want to do it or not. We don't really want to know God's will. When you're ready to obey and do what he wants, he'll show you his will. So you need a hard attitude change to know God's will. So, Okay? So why don't we apply some of these first nine generations um, they don't feel good. We don't want to be the, those people in slaves. That's part of the plan, to bring God glory, but we don't want to be there. Only the last one is something that we want, and that's what we applied. So um, we're going to stop for a moment because in Sunday school, we we're taught a whole lot of lessons and scripture verses and stuff. So I have some scripture verses up here, and I don't, I'm only going to give you probably about 10, 12. You know what? We're going to divide them. How many? One, two, three, four, five.